Hi, I'm Sally Trainer, and this is the watercolor series. And we've been working on all kinds of paintings that are non-objective, and they start with marking paper, actually with doodles, with different kinds of tools and resists and things like that. And we're going to show that now. And this is all based on some lessons uh, from Stan Kurth, who really uh, was trying to teach people how to paint intuitively rather than with full direction. So let's begin. Okay, so let's together um, work on uh, adding marks. So we've got a big piece of paper, or you can use a little piece of paper if you want, but I think I'd rather see you use a, a bigger piece of paper. And I'm going to start with my crayons. And I have found I actually like the resist that I've made with the colored crayons. And not only can I see them when I do them, which I can't with the white, but I find it interesting to have those colors peek through the layers of paint. And so if you have crayons, feel free to use colors. If you don't have crayons, just wham away with your um, with your candle or whatever it is you're using. Are we thinking in terms of this being anything, organic or landscape or figure or? Well, uh, what I'd like to see happen is something that- um, Just totally spontaneous? That, um, you know, maybe picking out an image that is gonna please you after it's done. But I also want you to be pleased with um, the shapes that you make and the colors that you add and using using your brush to good advantage to actually add a lot of watercolor to this first layer so that you've got lots of, of saturated color on this first layer. And, okay. and the special effects, you know, spraying it, um, spattering it, all those things. I, I want you to, you know, pull out the stops and just do it. I also see the value to having uh, remember, uh, he uses water-soluble inks to make a lot of his marks. And so some of those marks disappear completely. And as some of you have noticed, when you don't use a water-soluble ink, um, that, that stays and remains and is part of the, the final painting, uh, unless you cover it with the opaque gouache. But that's interesting, too. So there's there's all kinds of of marking that you can do that um, you don't you don't need to follow convention with this. You, you really I want you to think of every stage of this as something that interests you. Um, and and just as he uses marks that replicate things in his past that he has always enjoyed and and recognizes that about himself. Sometimes we would do that spontaneously without thinking about it. So let's take a little time to do that for a while. I don't know how much white I want left in this. I, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. I, I have no aim at this point. Let's see. I will use, um, I'll, I'll spread out a little bit now. I, I won't stick to just three pigments, but I will paint triadically in primaries. I mean, using primaries and mixing whatever. Um, I'm going to use 
my mop because it gives me a chance of using lots and lots of paint and lots and lots of water with every iteration. I will wet, let me see, I will wet cobalt and I will wet red shelter marine. I really like using the Quinn Gold. It's a nice, strong yellow and very warm, very nice. Uh, I'm going to wet, but I don't know if I will use it. I'm going to wet brown matter, alizarin, and... I guess I'll, I'm wetting, I don't know if I'll use it. I'm wetting Windsor yellow or Windsor red also. I think I'm only going to wet the, the Quinn gold. And I think I will go ahead and I'm not going to bother to clean up my palette. I'll just build on what's here. So I've got some areas that are kind of muddy, but I'll get rid of those. And one of the things I want to remind you of is that quality of watercolor, that when you put an area of color in, and then you put another area of color next to it, the wetter area is going to invade the first area. Always happens. If, however, everything is just soaking wet, um, it's not going to be quite as dramatic. If you blot your brush to control what you're adding, uh, that's a uh, that's just good practice. I think I will go ahead and start with the Quinn Gold because I happen to have a puddle of it right here. It has a little red in it, but that's okay. And I'm using this big mop brush that's giving me just amazing coverage. I can continue to paint with it quite a long time because it holds so much water. And if you recall from last week, because I'm paint, uh, painting on a slight tilt, uh, excess is going to run down and I should always have a thirsty brush ready to wick up extra water if it's going to cause me problems. So now I'll come in with some cobalt and some, I'm going to mix the cobalt with the French ultramarine, maybe get a little granulation. And I'm going to paint next to my yellow, and oh, be fast if your lights are shining right down on your paper in such a way that uh, you're starting to get edges already. As you, as you touch the wet area, it's gonna invade. Mine is invading like crazy. I'm gonna wick some of that up, get rid of it so it doesn't get my yellow gone completely. So have a thirsty brush ready to go. Now uh, let's come in with, um, let's come in with, uh, maybe some brown matter. Let's see what gives there. And you really want to do this time this fast, but make your brushes very saturated, your puddles very saturated, pick up paint freely uh, right from the well if you want, because you want this to be rich and ready to accept different effects because of what you do to it. And you need wet paint to, to make that happen. So I've just picked up some alizarin that I'm putting into the brown matter. And that's kind of interesting too. 
I think I want also, okay, yeah, I just did that with a little drop off color. My, my brush, I keep using the same brush and it, I'm not cleaning it entirely when I go back in. So I'm, I'm picking up new, new color, uh, which blends with the older color. So now I'm adding, I've got three reds going now. And I'm kind of liking what's happening with it. And some of those reds are picking up some of that graphite. Let's come back now and pick up some more yellow. And if you if you pick up your paper and and let things run into each other, you're going to get some nice effects as well. And you want to paint this fast enough so you can get your special effects with your salt or whatever you're going to be adding. I think I'm going to switch to a different brush because I'm not doing this fast enough. And I'd rather wick paint off than not have all this juicy stuff going on. So don't be afraid to to use a, a you know really a really saturated brush. Come back in with some more of this brown matter, which is giving me some really nice effects as well. Touching wet areas with it. Letting it run, causing it to run. I'm liking what I'm getting from the combination of the brown matter with the Windsor red in it, getting really some beautiful color here. I'm gonna come back into, let's see. Some of this is really getting too dry. So I'm going to come back in with wet paint into um, this area that I first put in that is the uh, the Quin Gold. It would not be wet enough to ex uh, you know to take any special effects if I didn't do that. And at this point, um, I'm gonna switch to all of these. They're, they're not small brushes, but they're smaller than that mop. And I'm gonna start spattering, which will in some ways emulate drop in color. So I'm spattering Quin gold into areas that are not Quin gold. See what they give me. Some places they just disappear. Some places they're turning green. Now I'll do the same thing with my blue and see what that happens. So now I'm gonna put a little salt in. Salt's always fun. I'm glad I used some um, French ultramarine because I'm getting a little granulation from that. And I'm 
I'm dropping this salt discreetly so it's almost grain by grain. Because when you drop a whole bunch of it, um, you're just going to get a, a big puddle, not, not discrete puddles. Uh, I like what happens when I use the alcohol. And I also like what happens when I use water, which is not quite as discreet as the alcohol. But remember, you don't want to overload it. But the other thing that you can do is just use plain water, water when you're um, splattering. Okay, so this is um, this is what I did last week, and it has um, a bunch of tape still on it, and it has a bunch of little dots. And I've been looking at this for a week, and let me just turn it around for you. And you can suggest to me what you might see in this. Um, what I see is a tree, and I'm going to use some watercolor pencil because I don't want it to show later. And I'm going to do some suggestive lines rather than um, absolute lines. And I think I'm going to start this tree. This could be water. I could start the tree on the bank. Or I could start the tree down here. I could go across the water. I think I'll start it at the bank. Incidentally, I have a lot of fun with trees, thinking about, you know, the lives they've lived and how tough times have been. Um, that's all I'm going to do for the moment. And I think I'm going to start with, actually, some watercolor rather than gouache. I've decided I hate gouache. That, that's not to say I won't use it on this, but you're gonna have to be patient now because this is entirely experimental out of my head. these reds that I was using in this and the yellows. So let's just keep doing this. Right now I'm kind of outlining the tree and then I'm losing the edge so I've got lots of time to come back in and play games with it. So I'm trying to remember all my self-made rules. 
about planes and this background plane has things in it. And those things might be trees also. So my intention here is to make my tree quite significantly a standout, my big tree. So I'm going to have a lot of these little trees in there too, because I rather like them already. I'm trying wherever I can to preserve um, some of my beautiful babies in the background. So I don't know if this is making sense to you yet because it's all in my head. I'm going to add some reds back in here because I want to. That's pretty wet right there, so I can only put one side of that tree in. They're just going to be suggestions of trees rather than very detailed. Maybe we should just go over to the other side of the big tree <clears throat> and see if we can get a little more realism from him. to preserve this area for later because it's where the foliage is going to be. And I want to make sure I've got some of that yellow on this side of the tree. Oops, that was a little too orange. We have to just make that orange. So can you kind of start to see where I'm going with this tree? Or it could be an evil ogre. I think we need to fill in here so we can have a little more idea of what the tree is about. this edge here because this is where we're going to go up into the foliage. Needless to say, I'm going to work on the body of the tree also, but right now I'm really just trying to define the tree. Let's just do one more thing down here. I'm thinking of this. as perhaps a bank of a 
a little stream or something. These gnarly roots lean over the bank. And maybe just a little more up here to finally refine um, the rest of the tree. And then it has to sit for a while to dry. Incidentally, I, I don't have anything particularly planned for these things that I have resist on. Um, and I'll make those decisions later. But right now, I would like to stop and dry this. So I've taken this this far and I've suggested a couple of little trees over here. Um, I think I'm going to draw a couple of those little trees for the background so that I remember to do them. And I will just kind of not be real precise with them, but just to suggest these little guys, and they will definitely be background. And some of them will just be uh, next to other trees and not have a lot of character to them. I think um, I, I like that kind of suggestion of things in the background um, because it gives you a context for your original tree. Let's see, I'll put some in here. Uh, they'll be darker than this. Again, I'm using the green pencil. I like also to suggest now some branches coming out from our main tree. Some more up here, but not going too far up because this is the area where I'm gonna develop foliage. Bring another one out of here and suggest some areas that would be branches up here. You know how we suggest when there's an interruption of foliage in front of things. And these marks may or may not be pertinent, but if I don't put them in, I'm afraid I'll forget to include them because they are part of what makes everything interesting to me but because I'm using watercolor pencil, it means that it doesn't matter if I use them exactly the way they are because the watercolor pencil will pretty much disappear. And let's see, let's put in some over here. And some of this will just be areas where I paint watercolor around them to suggest them. Don't make everything the same if you're doing anything with trees like this. Do some stuff that varies in direction. You don't want you don't want to be boring. And all of these little trees might have foliage as well.
I think that's all I'll do with them. I'm just going to do a little suggesting in the background now rather than um, much definition. I'm always happier to be using my watercolor for something like this. I know what it's going to do and where it's going to go. So I've created some positive shapes with some negative painting. But I can still see the background through what I've put on there. Uh, let's see if we can, can't see that very well, but I'll take a picture of it. And I'll just have them end in lost edge there up there because that's where the foliage starts and I put some over here also I'll just do those So I think that's all I'm going to work on for now. Um, but I've got big plans for this big tree. It's going to be elegant. It's oh so close to being finished. Mm -hmm. And I have been examining this painting without working on it for several days because I have decisions to make. And I'm going to use a small brush and a big brush because I'm going to do a bunch of lost painting or lost edges and a bunch of negative painting. I've decided that this is sitting on the edge of a bank overlooking water. Mm -hmm. But I'm not getting the illusion I want. So I need to come into that. And I'm going to use some of the some of this puddle I've already got going on, but I want eh, no, I'm going to do more blue in it. So, all right, I'm going to turn this into an overhanging bank. I'm going to give myself an edge here. I'm still defining that, that root, so it's going to be hanging out there in space. I'm going to come in with my wet brush and lose that other edge, so I have a lost edge and a hard edge. Feel free to go ha ah, anytime you want. Ooh. Okay, now I, you know, continue to create prod or uh, problems for myself, but I'm going to continue to drop color into this edge that's cast a shadow on that whatever is behind it. 
now because I've wet the the area near that, I can expand that area that is dark and the cast shadow. Always remember when you're losing an edge, wet more broadly than where you want the paint to be in that dark area. So let's make something happen there. Let's make that shadow bigger. And I'm not sure I like the shape of the bank now. Let's make it a little more irregular. And now I'm drawing from my puddle that I created with that shadow. still want to get in here with that dark but that's covering up one of those little odd spaces all right i'm liking this better um let's give that a little bit out here on the other side i won't lose that edge i'll just make it kind of feathery mind you i will probably work on this outside of your site um, because I'll have to examine it some more to see what I did. Um, I wanna do something with these and I'm thinking I wanna do, I'm coming in with a violet, which I have other places, but this is against white. So it's a little different. I'm going to drop some of that violet into this area, too. Ooh, I like that. Of course, it changes color because it's on top of other color and it's wet. Among the things that I've done with this painting, I exaggerated the reflex light on the edge of um, on this edge. So the light is coming from here. I want this to show up a little better than it is. This, the part of the tree that the crotch is. I don't like this now. So we have to come into that with maybe just plain cerulean blue, see what happens. So now you're you're just watching thought process. I kind of like that uh, being hard edge, but let's see what happens when we take out part of that edge. I like it better. Maybe one more little bit over here. See how the cerulean isn't giving me a really dark, dark shadow? That paint is not something that will ever give me a dark, dark. And sometimes that's okay. You don't need dark narcs every place. I'll have to live with this for a bit. But this whole area is quite changed now from what it mm -hmm. was. And maybe it solved my problem. I don't know yet. But let's just... I, I like this better, but it's not enough. Remember, things are in planes. This is in the same plane as this and this. This has to have something happen in it. I wanted to do this uh, in front of you because 
Uh, that's another thing that we haven't been practicing very much, and that's the fixed edges and lost edges. And that's, I don't want you to forget that skill. The other thing that has to happen here that I'm looking at it now is, and I'm glad somebody mentioned the, the Windsor Red. Let's just come in here with some water. Very gently, very gently wetting the paper. And now let's be bold with our Windsor Red once again. And let's introduce some of that down here. Okay, this is this is making me happier. Not completely, but I think I'm gonna have to take that right off the paper, make sure all my edges are lost. And I think we have to come in with some Quinn Gold. I'm just dropping it in. You know, I I I think um, we're not completely sure about this, but I think I've developed some of the unity that was missing. Um, maybe a little more up here. Let's just wet it again very carefully so we're not lifting what's there. And let's come in with that red. Let's let gravity do stuff for us. It's changing the trunks of those trees. I'm letting it flow over the trunks. And let's come in with a little more Quinn Gold. Um, I, I think I like what I've done to those tree trunks too. I think that makes sense. Let's just do a little bit of that here. I might, I might have to do a little bit more, but I'm, I'm much happier with the color harmony in this painting now. Almost done. I don't know where this painting is going, but I'm going to enter it someplace and hope that it gets in. <laughs> um, I have deliberately done a little bit of reflex light. If you remember what reflex light is, it's where light sneaks around the edge of a tree or, or an object, any kind of object, because it's backlit. And that's happening on this branch, this branch here in water. I, I mean, a brighter thing, but a little bit here. And uh, that's always fun to do, fun to leave that little space of a lighter area. Questions? Billy, did you start that with, uh, I'm trying to remember kind of that, the Kurth process of making a lot of marks on the paper first. I did. I did. Yeah. So it's not it going to look like any way. watercolor shows. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It looks that way. I like the lines that come through. I um I've gotten quite fond of that actually. And I like some of those lines better than other lines. And I've got a couple of tools now that I've thought I like I I like these um eccentric uh, not uh -huh. having to do with anything lines that are dark and that pleases me I like the resist that I get with the colored crayons as well as the white crayon you know there's just uh, there's a lot of things that I get from that that I I sort of can't paint I and, and they're unexpected incidentally this root here is just really bothering me a lot
So it's a primary triad, but it's not limited palette within those. And I, um, so with the exception of the couple places I've used a little bit of violet, I don't have any secondaries in here. They're all my, they're all primaries, which makes it a different approach for a landscape, obviously. And that, which pushes it into the kind of fantasy realm. Also, when I was um, defining edges, I had at first thought I would make a what's up here all foliage. And then I found that I, I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to make anything that definite ex except for the tree itself. Those light spots in the blue in the upper right quadrant or upper left quadrant. quadrant. Yeah. How was that started with salt. It just looks no, too that important. one. That is um, again. It's okay. magical timing. Uh, that's um, that's all alcohol. Oh, cool. And this down here, which you'll see when I post this, is also alcohol. Both there's and there. I'm I'm right fond of this guy. Yeah, it's beauty. And I have no idea where it came from because it certainly was not what I had planned when I did the original, just the color design. I decided that was just too bright. And I just went over it with some cerulean. And cerulean, the other feature with cerulean is that it is somewhat opaque. Okay, I don't know how much I'm going to like that because I could blot it right now and it would be gone, but I think this was too important. <laughs> 